are here to celebrate the life of Deborah Broyles. I have been recruited from a cast of thousands to assist today. I pastor the Sonoma Valley Community Church right here in Sonoma. I just would like to uh, begin with a brief opening prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And while we grieve at the loss of a very special and loved friend, we thank you for her life and the influence that she has had on so many, many people, the difference she has made. I would ask that you would give comfort and peace to those who have known her the best and loved her the most, even in these minutes together. In Jesus' name. of Worcester and every day we would play together. She lived next door to me and between our homes was this large driveway where we spent most of our times together. We would play um, a lot of pretend and um, one of my favorite memories um, is the two of us playing a uh, house. We would pretend to cook for our hard-working husbands <laughs> and uh, we'd make mud pies and stuff grape leaves and we'd drum up a big bowl of our witch's brew. When we weren't playing house, we were riding our bikes um, around the neighborhood, playing Charlie's Angels. That was one of our favorite games. <laughs> we would chase the bad guys around the neighborhood, and, or we'd venture off to Elm Park. Oftentimes, um, I would um, get in trouble for disobeying my parents' rules, and uh, they would forbid me to go outside and play. Uh, well, that never stopped us. We'd find a way to play. Her bedroom and my back porch faced each other, and um, she would hang outside our window, and I would hang on my porch, and. We'd just talk and laugh and giggle, and hours would go by. Um, the best part of my day was hanging out with Deb. I just loved her so much. Um, we would have so much fun together. Um, Debbie was a very special friend to me. Um, I was a small white girl living in the ghetto. Um, I didn't speak English very well um, until I started first grade, and uh, oftentimes I was bullied um, by the children in the neighborhood uh, because I was different. Um, Deb became my protector. She acted as my guardian angel, always looking out for me, appearing right at the right moment, scaring the bad guys away. She wouldn't have to say a word. She'd just come over and, is there a problem here? And they'd just <laughs> scatter away. I'm Linda Usar, and I had the privilege and found luck to have known and worked with Deborah for 20 years. Um, Deborah, as many of you will hear and know, was the most generous person you could know. She did not know the word I. Everything she did was without agenda, without motivation, or for ever wanting anything in return. You know, one of the things that I found out when we were talking um, a couple months ago was that she had a blood type O, and I know I'm violating probably HIPAA violations <laughs> by disclosing that here today, but I started laughing. I said, oh my God, that makes so much sense, because for those of you who may not know, blood type O means you can donate to anybody, but you can't receive necessarily from anybody but a small select group of people. And that was Deborah. She didn't expect anything in return, and she got her biggest joy from donating to everybody. I know this sounds like kind of a weird example to give, but it was just so profound, and we were both laughing over it. And she said, yeah, you know, you're right, you're right. And I feel badly that she couldn't get what she deserved back from everybody. But I'm also profoundly thankful to everybody here who did give back to her and were able to do it while she was alive because she appreciated that so much. And I think it gave her so much peace and comfort while she was battling this horrible illness.
Deborah came into my life probably strongly, probably like 10 years ago when, when Brad passed away. And um, um, Brad was a cousin I always looked up to. There's not a lot of great singletons in the family, and he was one who was successful. And it, what his passing is what brought us closer together. And, and Deborah and Molly and I um, had a lot in common, spent a lot of time together, shared lots of meals together, and it was um, definitely a very strong relationship. Um, like everyone says, she was generous to a fault. She, she, um, when the World Series came up and Molly was sick, she made sure that we got tickets to the World Series. And I'm happy I got to spend the time with her that I did. And the trips we got to take, we had a lot of fun. You know, we got, we got to make it to Vancouver last December. And we got to make it to Savannah just in July. But she definitely we missed. She's a very special lady. Uh, as many of you know, I um, was really reluctant about having this service here in her home because I felt like just those holes in our hearts would feel that much deeper. The pain would cut that much sharper. To be here, we would all be looking for her. I was going to host this at my house in Oakland and tell a very wise and smart Molina reminded me that, you know, Sonoma was her home, so we have to do it here. There are a lot of reasons why Sonoma was her home. Brad, her husband Brad, he was the love of her life, and she was the love of his. The love that they showed each other was so genuine, so sincere. They really, truly respected each other, admired everything about each other. They were so different, but they really supported each other and loved everything that, that the others stood for. <clears throat> they were so excited when they bought this home. They were both so proud <clears throat> of this house. <clears throat> they quickly made it into their home. <clears throat> it was a little quirky, but, um, but Brad <clears throat> cared about this home so much that he didn't want a single hole made in any of the walls, a single nail hole. Even though Brad <clears throat> left us about 10 years ago, she honored that request. And it was only in the last year that she started to put up just a few. You'll see there's just a few pieces of art. And it was only because they were meaningful photographs, um, gifts from friends and well-wishers, people trying to support her through, through her struggle. So particularly after going attending the service yesterday, hearing so many people say so many wonderful things about her and thinking about today, I was trying to think, how could I describe her to a stranger? And I thought, you know, she's kind of like, she's kind of like a magnifier. Hear me out. Because really, whatever, whatever emotion you're feeling, whatever experience you're going through, struggle, hardship, worry, if you brought that to Deborah, she would feel it so much stronger. <clears throat> if you were upset or worried about something, she would be more upset and more worried for you. And she'd be determined to fix it. With any of our successes, she was more excited than we were and more proud than, than we were. I mean, it's just, 
And it's not as though she was claiming it as her own success. She was just, she would just beam with joy to hear about people's successes. If you had a dilemma about your career, which direction to go, what to do, she would dissect that thing, figure it out, map it out, and, you know, unveil it to you. And if you were sad, her tears would always flow much, much heavier than your own. And her heart would ache much deeper than you can imagine. It was as if she wanted to and she truly, truly believed that she could take on everyone's frustrations, fear, joy, sadness, what have you, and just take care of it, magnify it, and make you feel better. It was really, really a remarkable thing. I think probably everyone in this room knows Deborah and I were fortunate enough to we always said we went on tour with Bruce Springsteen um, so we went to several concerts so we were both Bruce Springsteen fans um, Bruce Springsteen lost his dearest and closest member of his band Clarence Clemens totally devastated. Not that he told me this. <laughs> he gave a beautiful eulogy, not that I was there. Um, but I did find pieces of it, and I, I'm going to borrow from it again. Just um, in closing, I'll just say, uh, I'll, I'll quote Bruce Springsteen, talking of his dear friend Clarence. <clears throat> I believe that we must have stood together in other times, in older times, along other rivers, in other cities, in other fields. So I won't say goodbye. I'll simply say see you in the next life further on up the road. When great souls die, after a period, peace blooms. Slowly and always irregularly. Space fills with a kind of a soothing electric vibration. Our senses restored, never to be the same, whispered to us. They existed. They existed.